Hi, and welcome to Lights of the Round Table. And today we have quite a different subject for all of you today. I have Amanda Jonah Hartz with me. She has done documentaries on various themes and topics, but today we have her with Lily Nova. And Lily Nova is started taking photographs during the pandemic uh, of the stars. Uh, she's an astrophotographer, I believe. That's how you call it. Um, yourself. And so she started having contact with worldly beings. And so welcome both ladies for being here today. Um, Lily, mm -hmm. I understand that you are a star seed and that you started having encounters. How did that all start? It? Yeah. So it really came out of left field. I wasn't expecting it at all. Um, I like like you were saying I started shooting pictures of the night sky and after about a few months of that and this is in the middle of lockdown uh I started I had a very very close UFO encounter like very close <laughs> like I, it was I went outside on my front porch I looked over looked up to the stars like I always do and I saw this hovering craft and then like a few seconds later, another one appeared. It seemed to appear out of nowhere. And it was like a, a diamond-shaped craft with lights. And it moved up, down, side, side, and then came straight towards me and disappeared right above my head. So that, like, that, um, I was shaking because that's just a really close encounter, especially for your first um, UFO. And then it just changed my whole paradigm. And then after that, I started seeing them left and right. So it took a while for me to find out that I was a star seed. I had I had no idea about any of this. Um, I just began documenting the UFOs, and you know, like I would be asking them questions and and taking pictures of them, and like a communication uh, began to develop. And then probably about like five months in, I found out that I was a star seed and that they were my star family. So that's how I found out. <laughs> Well, in what, well, what, where'd you come from then? I mean, how do you find these things? Yeah. And do they, how do they communicate and tell you where you come from or how does this happen? How does it evolve? Yeah. So, well, I, I really, once a, more of a communication began with them, at first the communication, like it, it's telepathic, but it can be really subtle. It it comes, it can be like an intuitive thought. Um, but you're like, was that my thought or was that somebody else's thought? So that's how it that's how it started. So I wasn't like I kind of knew that I was communicating with them, or they would show me that, hey, we're listening. They would do something directly related to what I just said. So it was a lot of trial and error. And whenever communication ramped up with them, whenever they're like, okay, she's ready for the next level, she's ready to find out she's a star seed and to find out who we are. Um, they worked with me on developing psychic abilities. And then that also helped. I began meditating a lot. But um, before I had developed my psychic abilities, I went to a group meditation circle. I'm seeing these UFOs all the time. I had no, I, I didn't know for sure who they were. Um, the psychic's like, uh, Lily, your star family's here. There's, there's Lyrans. So that's how I found out my first who they hmm. were at first and then shortly after they they confirmed they're like yes we're we're Lyran it's like they kind of give you little breadcrumbs little pieces to the puzzle they were just giving me like a little bit at a time um and then communication began with the Pleiadians a little bit later so I I have multiple star families wow so Amanda for you how did this journey to document and create a UFO documentary. How did this all started for you? Because you too, I understand that you have some abilities, special abilities. Well, um, I I saw light tunnels out my bedroom window one night. Um, I found out they hadn't been open since Atlantis. The next day, I ran across the channel message all about these light tunnels being reopened up. These beautiful golden tunnels of light. Um, then. I woke up with a blue avian out my bedroom window, which is a blue bird being um, that a guy named Corey Good talks about. I 
I ran into his work two days later mm -hmm. um, after experiencing that. Um, and so it led me to documenting and following the UFO and disclosure movement. I had already documented the heroin epidemic um, because of my spiritual experiences and a vision from God that I had um, 10 plus years ago to do a television show helping trafficked women um, re-transition out of trafficking and reformat their lives. Um, so my story is really weird and <laughs> varied and deep um, too. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's definitely happening. I've, I've had some experiences with um, being beamed up in a Pleiadian spaceship to um, in a dream. I just thought it was a dream. And then I ran across um, a guy named Billy after that. And he, uh, I forget his last name, maybe Lily knows. Uh, do you know who I'm talking about, Lily, or no? Um, no. Oh, okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, uh, some Billy Meyer, Billy My Mayer or Meyer. And he had actual pictures of the craft that I saw in the dream. And um, he uh, went on to say that he, he had the actual photographs were identical to my dream. Um, and in the dream, I stood up and was like, I got to send out my light and love. I got to send out my light and love. And he goes on to say in his experience that they wouldn't, um, he'd have to have no idea when they would go to beam him up in the craft because. You would get so nervous and it would ruin the technology and you had to be in a state of um, love and have no fear at all or it would it would ruin the technology or something so i feel like that was a real experience to me and i ran across him two days after i saw you know it had this dream so it was another one of those things like god will show me these things and i'll be revealed what it is through divine timing and synchronicity you know or I wouldn't even know. I wouldn't have any idea at all. Yeah, but so. you know, it sounds it sounds to me because and and I know you, Amanda, a little bit. So you do have a very strong spiritual background behind you uh, for many many years. How about you, Lily? Well, do you did you have a do you have a strong spiritual background mm -hmm. that actually perhaps um, gave you the ability to access? Or have a, a bigger open mind or were you just like looking at the skies taking pictures during the pandemic and started was there any ten, in, intent i guess in all of this do you know yeah i had a little bit of a spirit some spiritual i started well like my dad had passed a while ago and then after he passed i was like i know that he's not just gone like there's got to be something else to it so then i started looking into spirituality and began learning about the chakras and, and, and things like that. And then, um, also I've had family with, with addiction and been impacted by the, the heroin epidemic. And I had spiritual experiences through that too. So, um, so yeah, I was, I was a little bit in there, but not like I, I was, I, they really gave me the crash course on all of this. I was very open-minded. Um, and you know, I remember my dad showing me ancient aliens whenever, like whenever, you know, I was younger and we would watch that. And I remember the first night he freaked me out so bad because I was just like, oh my God, <laughs> like, it's real, it's real. But I wasn't expecting to, to see anything. So yeah. So I was definitely open to it, but yeah, they gave me the crash course. I feel like the past two years. So how did they? So Lydia, how did they? Um, how did these mm, beings contacted you? Mm -hmm. how, what happened? So at first, a lot of it was it was like the physical ship, you know, seeing the physical ships, um, getting like an idea or information dropped on my head, signs and synchronicities. Um, and then I began meditating and they, they like instructed me to meditate. So then I began working on my third eye, opening my third eye. So sometimes I'll, I'll feel them just randomly. Like a lot of the time I see them through visions. So they'll send me like a telepathic vision that they're here. Like this morning, right after I woke up, I received a quick telepathic vision of like four beings that were just standing there. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and how do they look like? <laughs> what? 
these ones look more, I want to say they may be um, Andromedan, but they look more gray-like. Um, so sometimes I will see beings like that. And apparently th these beings are from the Andromeda galaxy and they're very, very high vibrational, like 12D. Their body's mostly energetic. So how I began, how I met these ones, um, they take on a more dense form a more dense body that can handle being on earth and in this dense environment, if that makes sense, in order to help us. So in order to like, to work on me and to help, they like, they're originally energetic beings and then they come into a more dense body. Um, so those, and then like uh, Pleiadians frequently um, Lyrans beings with light blue skin and no hair. That was the first one. I ever saw and that's um yeah so those they'll, they'll, they'll what's that no I wanted to say and yeah that was your first encounter it was a little girl I think that you described it that yeah, appeared to the, you yeah yeah she wasn't she was she was a um like adult age though but yeah she had light blue skin no hair and then a while later I feel like a month or a few months I found out that that was me after I started that once I saw her that's when communication ramped up. It felt like she was in my head every single day with me. I could hear her. She was instructing me, meditate, work on your third eye. You need to open your heart. <laughs> All of these different things. <laughs> so. And did it work? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, silly yeah, question. No, silly question, but really. Um, so so a lot basically, of work, though. I will say it, it was a lot of work, though. It yeah, was I, a lot of work. So... Amanda, go ahead. I'm just, I'm just, so how does one develop all this growth, I guess, and opening the third eye? Because we hear that there's, um, we are more that we are led to believe as people and that um, we can also create, we, we have powers within that we haven't tapped on. Not everybody. I don't know. These are just things that you come across, you know, from circles. And so, Amanda, how about you? What do you think? Well, I'm just wondering anything specific that we can learn or you can teach any tools that a lot of people aren't talking about. I know like cut out fluoride water and mm -hmm. sound healing is really helpful. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of the, when I'm at night, when I'm going to sleep, I see a lot of blue faces, you know, I feel like it's always hard to make out. Um, and I always wonder, are they the avian beings because they come in the blue orbs or, you know, are they like the Lyran, Lyrans, Lyrans? Um, are the Lyran, Lyrans or Lyrans, are they the associated with the lion beings too, I wonder? Yeah, yeah. So the lion beings, so I also started seeing those in those. They are originally from Lyra. Um, some of them migrated from Lyra and and they're now Syrian, but that's that's where originally the feline beings come from is Lyra. And I believe the avian beings do originally. So there's all different kinds though. There's yeah, there's different there's so many different colors and shapes and sizes. <laughs> I'm not, I'm amazed how much you know, Lily, in such a short time. I mean, you let's reiterate, I mean, you started this what back in 2020. Mm -hmm. That's right, 2020. And here you are, an expert on stars mm -hmm. and planets and Andromedas and who is who and Pleiadians. Um, <laughs> is it that hard to learn or it, it, are you receiving downloads? And what do those download, downloads um, feel to you? I mean, how do you perceive all that information? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you this. This took over my whole life. Like this is all I do now. <laughs> I was an, I was a nutritionist before this. I was teaching nutrition and cooking classes. I suddenly it was like my dream job. It was my dream career. That's what I'd gone to school for. Suddenly, you know, it's it the pandemic. My boss suddenly becomes like a huge narcissist, and I just can't take it. The environment becomes so toxic. I leave, which really bummed me out because that's what I went to school for. Not too long after the UFOs started showing up. So they showed up at kind of like a new rock bottom and they helped, you know, they helped me 
uh, come out of that. Um, and that's what I do now. Like I started meditating every day. I started, I went out and I made contact with them every single day at first, like physical with the UFOs. And then as, as I developed meditation, so that's the key there, meditation. Uh, that's when I started seeing them visually and communication ramped up. And then I could receive downloads. Um, and a lot of time downloads are just like ideas, inspiration, or thought. You may not even know that it's a download. It could be like just like a revelation, like, huh, or, uh, you know, a calling to there's a lot of people since I do a lot of like UFO photography, they'll say that, you know, they go outside, they just get the nudge to go outside and look up or they get the nudge to to take a picture of the sky. And whenever they do, there's a UFO there. So that's a download. That's the, that's like a, a text message notification, like, hey, look up, we're outside. So it can be like that. It doesn't have to be like a huge, like whole paragraph and huge, like, you know, revolutionary idea. It can just kind of come in little bits and pieces. And mm -hmm. as you set the intention to become more familiar with it and, you know, ask, asking and then setting the intention is very, very important. And also for developing these abilities and gifts. The DNA is a huge part of that. And that's what the star being started showing me before I even knew about star seed, anything they were showing me DNA and they were basically like, um, your DNA is very important. It's very special. And like you were saying, you're more than what you've been led to believe. And they taught me that you can activate this DNA and that's where all these secret gifts are in and just things get a lot easier whenever you begin act. And things get magical. Hmm. So, Amanda, how do you know? Uh, uh, it's very interesting. How do you know where you belong in this universe, if I may say? It's it's just how do you know? Do they tell you, well, you are from this planet or you are from here and we're just here to help you? Help me, ladies. It's just such a, <laughs> it's, it's how do you, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I could have thoughts and sometimes I feel things, but you know, I don't know, you know, that little voice inside, is it true? Is it real? Where does it come from? I feel like I don't need to know everything. I think um, just staying in my heart and just uh, letting that be my compass every day to what I feel guided to do and not letting other people sway you. Although when some other people try to sway you, it a lot of times has purpose. So you have to look at that and why it's so important that somebody's trying to take you off your path in a different direction. But you got to really use discernment in that and, you know, take the reins and, you know, be accountable to what you're creating and, and know that, um, you know, you, you got to value your time and you got, because with your time, you get results and you got to put the time in to get results. Um, uh, I think I, I like Lily, uh, the meditation, I'll go in there with an intention and lay it go. I, I like the bathtub. That's where I'll get a lot of my ideas and inspiration and I'll kind of know what to do next. Sometimes when I get out of the bathtub, it's like, okay, I got that answer. I, 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 I know what I needed to know. Um, or some things I don't even know. And I'll be like, what is that about? And then I'll be revealed things later about what I was getting. Um, so, uh, yeah. How long do you meditate for Lily? I'm curious. <laughs> yeah. And I, I love everything that you just said too. They don't, they don't tell me everything. Part, right. part of, part of my mission is to help other people connect with their star families. So I've seen like a big variety of star families, but they they, I mean, they took forever to tell me that they were Lyran, like a really long time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it took me like six months to find out I was also Pleiadian. So, um, so yeah, yeah, you don't, you, you're right. They don't, you don't need to know everything and they don't always give you everything. So don't feel bad if you don't know everything. So, so you are Pleiadian, but you're working with the Lyran. So what much. I, yeah, so what I've found is I'm actually well I'm Pleiadian, Lyran, Syrian, and in Andromeda constellation and probably other ones. I do star origins readings for people and what I find is there's usually three plus star families because our souls are really old. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, different star families will meet with you. And I will say, I also have seen the blue avians. I have one that comes and checks on me and, and it has been helping guide me. And they are amazing. They're just really cool beings. Very powerful. I was so, told I was Pleiadian by a reader like yourself, and um, but I was an Andromedan angel, and I really don't know what that means. Maybe I should get a reading with you or um, yeah. sometime, or yeah, sounds like, like an energetic. Know more, about, uh, more about it, you know. I've always had, uh, I always liked uh, lions and beings. Taya, come. Sorry, my dog. Um, and uh, a Native American shaman told me that I was, um, that I had a totem. My totem was uh, a cheetah and it would circled me in the sweat lodge. And she said, it's showing you to be courageous and helping you get things done fast and all this stuff. So I really feel connected to the lion beings, you know, as well because of that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. What I, what I found a lot of the time, most of the time you've been Lyran and that's like ancient history. That's, mm -hmm. But that's deep in your blood. That's deep in your DNA. Um, and then a lot of them went over to being Pleiadian and some other things in between. But that's that's the most common thing that I see is Lyran and then Pleiadian. So usually both of those together. Yeah. And you have guides from, you know, you have star family that, that will show up. You may see like a, a vision of like a lion face or see a sign of you know something and that's yeah that's that's them helping you to embody that that energy what has been so far your favorite part of this journey what do you recollect as that special moment when you like had an aha or things just came to you and say you know it's a, that good feeling that you knew that you were on the right path mm -hmm. yeah that's 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 a good one. Um, well, this this would happen to me, especially in the beginning, all the time. Whenever I was going out and, ma and making contact with them, this just immense feeling of love. It's so immense; it makes you ball your eyes out, and it's inspiring. And I would feel that way with them whenever I saw them. And I remember there was one. There was okay. So there's one day. This is before I'm posting content on this on YouTube. I'm still trying to figure out what the heck's going on. And, you know, I just left the park from spending time with them, taking pictures of the UFOs and stuff, communicate with them. And I'm like, all right, but guys, what am I doing? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> like, I'm going out and making contact with you every day, but what's going on? I hadn't had a job in a while. <laughs> what am I doing? What direction do I go? And at that instant, I look up. The street that I'm passing is called Revolution. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> this is great. Yeah. It's funny. There's no coincidence, right? We were told there's coincidence in life. What coincidence? There's a lot of intent. If you look for it, if you look those messages, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. We're, we're working in zero point energy now. We're lining up timelines to where, you know, if that person's driving next to you with that license plate or whatever, they're, you know, we're starting to work in unity consciousness together like we're doing right now, you know, we're creating, you know, amazing timelines and awakening the world with it. It's un unbelievable the license plates and the stuff that I get every day just pulling out my driveway. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't make this <laughs> stuff up. It's like, non-stop once you just stay in that heart space and quit uh, creating distortion you know because you can create whatever you want but you want to create higher timelines of love and great synchronicities or do you want to create lower timelines of distorted timelines of crap although they all are great teachers in your life and you know you know we wouldn't no dark and light if we didn't go through the fire to be you know purified so yeah yeah that's part Enjoy of the your trials <laughs> mm -hmm. so lily you want to do a, a little what is it that you ask or what is it that you do to get a reading i mean what are you some i don't mm -hmm. know if i should do this but 
I don't know. Do you want to give a little demo? I don't know. <laughs> that would be great. Sure. Yeah, I don't well, know. Amanda, I was also sensing that you have some Arcturians that are working with you around you. And they may be the blue orb. They could be. Yeah. They they come as oftentimes they'll come as blue orbs also. Yeah. And I'm feeling Lyran for you, the feline beings. So for Susanna, so what yeah. There's there's more in there too, but that's that's the first one that just is yelling out. So how I do like my readings is I I go deep into meditation. I meditate for about 45 minutes beforehand. And I just say, okay, I ask to access their Akashic records, make contact with their star families, and just, you know, whatever will help them the most. And then I receive a lot of it through vision. So I'll write like a full page of notes. And then, um, you know, they'll show me all different kinds of things, their star origins, um, and then just whatever will help them the most. Each session is pretty different. Um, and then I do like a Zoom call. Right as Amanda was saying, the the blue energy, I felt the Arcturians around. And Susanna, for you, I felt the Lyrans immediately. Some of those are the feline beings, but there can be other other beings as well. And I feel like you have Andromedan also. Andromedan. So from the Andromeda galaxy, which is interesting because Amanda was just talking. She That could be why you're drawn to each other. You may even know each other. You, you both have uh, Andromedan energy as well. So Andromedan. And I'm, I'm sensing Orion also. For you, Susanna. Mm -hmm. There's a few different ones. Have you ever felt like drawn to the Orion or constellation? I look at the skies. Yes, I look up at the skies. Uh, bango, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. What's funny is a lot of the time, like our our heart knows, our intuition knows if we feel drawn to a specific thing. Like if you've Amanda's always felt drawn to like the the, the lion or feline beings. There's a reason for it. You felt drawn to Orion. There's a reason for it. I fell in love with the star Sirius. Whenever I, after these UFOs started coming, I had no idea, you know, about the star seed yet thing yet. But I would look up at the star Sirius, which is right next to Orion. And I would just be like, I know you're up there. I would just feel like this love and just amazement looking up. And then I found out that, yes, there are beings from Sirius. So, yeah, a lot of the time we'll get those hints just throughout our life and whatever we feel drawn to. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you, do, do you follow these galactic, uh, what is it called? The galactic um, um, help federation, of life. federation and all that. Do you follow, is, is, is there some, is there some truth or is there, is it real? I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I don't know. It's a bit of a, many would say it's conspiracy theory and but who knows? Yeah, I mean, it sounds crazy for sure. It definitely sounds crazy, uh, but the the Galactic Federation is real. Yeah, it's real. Um, most of us have connections with the Galactic Federation, and that's why we're here. Mm -hmm. It's our mission to incarnate well, it, on Earth. Yeah, and there's the Galactic Federation of Light, and then there's the Galactic Federation of Worlds, and then there's the so many. Yeah, it's like, um, and some say there's so it's such a mess right now. It's like I don't know what to think about all that. Some say that the Vatican is associated with the Galactic Federation of Light and it's compromised, so we need to be careful. But uh, you know, there's either way. There's star beings working with us. There are a federation of beings working, you know, with us. Um, so I think discernment again is key, and you know, and always. Yeah willing and praying that these they only are the highest benevolent beings that could possibly be working with me as what well. highest angelic in forms of angels whatever you want to call it, these different star beings you know for me i always ask for the highest loving benevolent forces of the source we call god that is of love you know yeah. I don't know. I try to protect myself because there's all these other not so good beings, and then you have the Greys and the Reptilians and 
Have you experienced anything like that? Um, I went to the grocery store once and some lady dropped something in front of me and went to pick it up and looked me square in the eyes and she had straight slits for pupils. And then I heard the word, I've always had this still small voice that's guided me. I heard the word reptilian and I'm like, I want I said the word F word and I'm like, I didn't want to believe about the reptilians. And now I got to go down that rabbit hole. Now I got to learn about the reptilians. Like I was kind of heated over that. Like I like something I didn't want to go down, but you know, you look at, you know, the demonic forces in the Bible, they're all very much in nature to these reptilian like beings or, you know, right. Have you ever had experience with that or the, the gray stuff, the gray stuff, the grays. <laughs> I have two, I've had, um, I'll tell you in a minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm pretty luck lucky in the in the aspect of my my contact experiences have been very benevolent and loving, but they have shown me, especially after the the Orlando conference, I got a lot of downloads of I actually got to see the dark nature of the reptilians, and I got to see it previous lifetimes where I had been affected. You know, they were doing genetic mutation and testing and and trapping people, the the trafficking, all of that stuff, like like what you said, like I didn't want to believe it. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. I don't want to focus my attention on it, but unfortunately it is real. Um so I I got to see it and experience that way. And I had to like kind of rework through that trauma, even though it wasn't like right, it was right in my face, very visions like like almost like re-experiencing it again, but I've never been contacted. By you know those beings they're basically like this is part of your history you need to and this is part of what's going on on earth so you need to you know just be, become aware of it and in and, and work through it um there and there are like some of these andromedans like i was mentioning they do look gray like and at first it took me a while to open up to them because of of what you know there's a there's a lot but there's so many different types of grays. I've also, before I even knew about the negative and positive ETs, I didn't really, I didn't listen to anybody else. I didn't, I was just learning through my firsthand experience. I had very positive experiences with some of these gray light beings. Um, but then once you start getting out and, and hearing stuff in the media, even like within the community and stuff, it gets confusing. There's conflicting things. Um, so then there's like a, a fear around that. But yeah, the the Andromedans that I met, they they do, they look gray-like, but they're very positive. They felt like complete love. And that's how you know if your heart, if you feel it in your heart that it's love, then those negative, like the negativity can't get in. Like it's a, it's a totally different frequency. So if you're following your heart, focusing on your heart, that's what you're going to get. Set the intention to be to be specific that you are only connecting with loving beings of the highest love and light and that's what you'll get um but yeah discernment's important and i think a lot of the confusion is thrown out there just to confuse and separate us unfortunately so um yeah but besides that i haven't had any like negative contact experiences i've just had a bunch of negative memories having to do with that come up lily i wanted to ask you that if we if you're sensing that we're going up on a vibration, are we ascending? Is it true? Is it happening? Is is humanity moving to, let's say, a, a better place, um, a better experience? Mm -hmm. I believe so, yeah. Um, and they've shown me visions of like, this is where it gets like a little confusing, but in, in a lot of the beings that we are seeing who are guiding us are actually other versions of us. ET version from the future, from parallel lifetimes. And it's like they're all coming to help us right now. And they're activating something different within us so that we can embody, like, we have amazing genetics. We have a mixture of all of these different types of beings. We've done all of these different things. We've been in Andromeda. We've been, you know, on the Orion Council of Light. We've done all of these, these things. So it's like we're activating that within us. And yeah, going into a whole new frequency, a whole new earth that's going to be very pretty. But I think you can live in the 5D now to just choosing, you know, if you're choosing love, choosing your heart, and then you, you'll draw more of that to you. 
Mm -hmm. So what do you see then for 2023 this year as far as, um, you, you know, your experience with what you do with people and how you coach them and what you see on a worldly basis? What is it that you are getting those messages receiving? What kind of messages are you receiving from your um, yeah, so they, uh, they just they actually I just posted a video of this last week. They gave me some messages from the future, which they don't always do because, you know, we're they don't always give us the future. <laughs> and it's like it's a potential. But what they said was. Well, we'll be getting a lot of DNA upgrades. Also, they're going to be dropping new discoveries and ideas into the scientific community, teaching them. Um advances in science in in dna which is very important that's going to be like a huge part to all of this um they did mention the vatican and they said that there will be peaceful like disclosure will come having to do with the vatican and and there will be movements towards peace so i thought that was interesting i don't know what's going on in the news or in the community about the vatican i just know that that's what they told me um there will be something new that happens with gold will be a big part of it um yeah a lot of new discoveries um upgrades growth they were also saying they will not allow for for the the news and media everybody like, not everybody but people are freaking out about nuclear war and war and stuff like that they said don't feed it don't worry about it there will not be there won't be nuclear war they will not allow nuke to go off um so they're basically like focus on positive things focus focus on you know your heart and this is going to actually be like a really good a really big key year for us so there'll be a lot of advancements made hopefully that, that makes sense but yeah it was very positive and uplifting so i'm excited <laughs> me too what do you think about this amanda i mean we we certainly need a little bit of positivity over a year and move on <laughs> you know our, everything is in disarray you know we look around what's going on politically economically and it's just such um oh. it's overwhelming yes go ahead Lily, go ahead they, they said one other thing that got me very excited they said by christmas new financial systems or there will be some some major event that happens on the planet that decreases poverty and increases abundance by christmas they showed me like a christmas tree and then they said new um money something having to do with new money systems will start coming into place so christmas isn't that far away you know um so yeah we're gonna have, have something that happens on earth that increases abundance and decreases poverty for you know like for the people which is pretty cool that's you're gonna cool. have to tell, tell me what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> have to watch my videos. There's so much. I mean, there's so many rabbit holes and you can only your heart goes to what you think is the true path. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, but we, yeah, it's yeah, we, there's going to be a, a change. I mean, our financial our banking system is going to crash, collapse, never to come back. And we're going to go to this new era uh, with lots of ab abundance um, at all levels, especially for the poor of the poorest. and. Yeah, it's great. So um, looking yeah, forward to that one. I guess it's going to be a great, great uh, Christmas for a lot of people. But anyways, yeah. Amanda? As long as it's not Biden box, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. CDC, C, CDC, what is it? I don't know. Digital currency Biden's trying to roll out. We probably don't want to go that direction. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen, Amanda. Those CBDCs have been flipped and um, it's going to be abundance for all and not for those who have had enslaved us for so long. So apparently that's where we're heading. We'll see. I mean, only time can tell, you know, so that's how I see it. You know, and just keep yourself positive. Um, I'm with Lily. You know, when you go to some of these rabbit holes where you talk about reptilians and stuff um, and uh, you you look at the history and how we've been manipulated and enslaved you know it's it's just hard to take and i prefer to shun away those forces because i feel in my heart that i just how much you know we've all had our past we've all had experiences that have not been the, the best you know we've all learned our lessons for whatever you know whatever that might be even 
big or small, you know? And so with that consideration, I just have to move on. I don't have more time to spend on that type of energy because we only live once, make the best out of it. And I just go with that because if not, you throw your towel and then you're succumbing yourself to, to other, to, to issues and troubles and worries that you shouldn't. That's how I think. Maybe I'm not, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm wrong in all of this. Well, they flee with, you know, when you send out your love, they don't want to be around that force. That's like a warfare on them. So um, they feed on loose or negative energies and sadness and depression and want to keep feeding, you know, you those kind of thoughts so that you stay in that vibration so they can be hijackers and siphon energy off of you. So definitely don't want to feed them. Try to do whatever you can to deal with your, you know, trauma. Go take a bath if, you know, you have to integrate stuff that you're dealing with on your daily life and then come back into the now and be the most love and light you can be. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, don't let them keep you down there. If you're down, try to get back up, raise your vibration so you can, you know, work in zero point energy and create and manifest amazing timelines. And we're working in the record halls, you know. We're, we're accessing these records in our dream time, you know, you might have a dream about something that has, you know, shows you and then you know what to do in your waking life, you know, so um, use discernment always, but um, yeah, so it, it's, you know, walking in faith, I think really important right now and trusting and know that God's got you as long as your intentions are good. The benevolent forces want to work with people that are 51% service to others rather than service to self. So always look what you can do to help humanity in your daily lives. Yeah. So Lily, uh, to go to your website, you give, you do private readings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I actually, I have them uh, booked at the moment, but if people want to email me, they can. There's yeah, there should be a, there's a contact on my website, lilynovaspaceart.com. Good. And Amanda, to see your, your documentaries, I'll post that. And that is called? Uh, Amanda Joan of Heart.com. I'm the creator and founder of StrippedClean.net TV with Purpose. It's soon to be uh, the Great Awakening documentaries coming out. And Lily Nova is in it. Turned out amazing. Um, it's coming soon. It'll be on my website uh, at some point here uh, in the next few months and available. It's a beautiful um, documentary going over a lot of different uh, sensitive topics. And um, Mm -hmm. it'll be awakeningunite.com. It's not up yet, but it will be. You can find a lot of the content that I've already produced and created on amandajoanofheart.com or stripclean.net. Television with a higher purpose. (laughs) There you go. Well, thank you very much, you ladies, for for coming over. And uh, we'll... (laughs) I'm sorry, I think we're all feeling some of the uh, energies today. We've had a couple of technical issues. So I really appreciate your patience and we hope to see you soon. Thank you so much, Lily, for joining for joining us. Yeah. Amanda, Thank you so likewise. much for having me on. Take You're care. Very welcome. Thank you so much. That was awesome.